Alright, g'day people, I am back. I am going to attempt to draw myself a Pigasaurus, which is basically just going to be a pig that's roaring like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and it's going to be called Jurassic Park. So what I'll do is... Ah... Don't mind me, I'm just noticing that the, the sound is actually coming from the lens of this camera, not from the camera itself. Interesting. I did previously draw a little sketchy idea of this beforehand. Um, just to give me a slight idea. I didn't draw it very far, because I thought, hmm, this would be good to videotape myself drawing. So, I'm drawing this with a lead pencil. It's a um, mechanical pencil, you can probably tell. Um, let's see if I, yeah, that's probably. Make sure it's in focus. Is it in focus? Oh no, there we go. That's better. Sorry about that, people. Um, so yeah, I'm drawing this with a mechanical pencil. I actually tend to prefer drawing mechanic with mechanical pencils. I mean, I can draw with a traditional pencil, but I just find the whole idea of having the sharpen a pencil uh, time consuming considering you have to keep doing it and your pencil um, only remains so sharp for a period of time so with these with these uh, yeah you, you, you can see it as I'm doing um, and that when drawing with a mechanical pencil it stays sharp forever you just have to keep click click clicking at the back so what I'm doing is I'm kind of imagining this little guy in my head he's, he's more or less finished in my head so I'm just trying to get him onto the paper now so I don't quite like how that how his brow looks over there so I'm going to draw that again good thing about pencils is you can erase them Pens are less forgiving, so I'm not going to draw a pen this time. So I am going to give him like a bit of a roar facial expression. So kind of give him a bit of a open mouth roar, like he's a T Rex. Now I know with um, drawing guides, you really should be like you know, putting down shapes and such, but I'm not really using this as a tutorial. I'm just letting you guys watch me draw something. This is how I tend to draw my little characters straight from my head. So, he's got a bit of a Simpsons mouth there. Am I going to give him a, what kind of chin am I going to give him? I don't know. For now, I'm going to finish off his news. Here's his news. The piggy wiggy news. Then I will give him some Tyrannosaurus like teeth for that satirical Jurassic pork um, flavor, <laughs> I guess. That was a bad joke, but hey, whatever. So just drawing his teeth in. I can almost actually hear him doing his little roar sound. Actually, this m may sound crazy, but sometimes it's actually a good idea to make the noise or do the character's expression before or while drawing it, so you can kind of imagine how their face contorts and stretches. like. You kind of do that with your own mouth a little bit, and you know, just subtly, and you just try and translate that into a character formation. And now I'm trying to draw his teeth to look um, ghoulish, or no, not ghoulish. Trying to make him look like a, a dinosaur, sort of, but not over the top. Just enough. 
Hey, there you go. There, there's his uh, teeth. Keep him, uh, and I'm going to move my laptop out of the way. Because I'm drawing right next to my laptop. Going to give him some uh, piggy wiggy ears. And I kind of had the idea that maybe his ears might be kind of well, I want them to be like peak ears, naturally, obviously, but because he's roaring them, he's roaring them, that's not how you say it, he's roaring. Um, I'm kind of imagining how like, you know, a, a tiger or a lion, you know, how they, how they have their ears when they roar, and I'm translating that. Kind of, into pig fashion. Mm, pig fashion, how'd that be, hey? Oh, actually, I suppose, you know, this piggy is pig fashion. So, that, well, if... I'd like to hope people know who pig, Miss Piggy is. I mean, like... Disney have uh, accl claimed the rights to The Muppet Show, and they seem to be really going with rejuvenating that... Um intellectual property so I'm giving him a bit of a flappy ear I mean this could be a she you know but I'm making him a him just cause it's, I don't know why not As you can see, I put a little bit of shading in under his ear. I don't know if you can actually see that. If you're watching this in uh, 1080p, you'll be able to see it, hopefully. But when I get myself a proper webcam that can focus on smaller detail, stuff like this will be easier to watch. But for now, I'm just using this DSLR camera, which is really good for widescreen stuff, but it's not the best for macro and small style, and I tend to like to draw in this small size. The other thing I have to be mindful of is this thing only records in 20 minute intervals. I've had that bite me in the butt before. So I'm gonna, um, ah, hang on, let's see if, um, I have no little kind of eraser on the back of this thing. And usually I like doing that, but I've already used up all the eraser in this guy. So I'll just have to use the bigger, blockier one. I'm not the biggest fan of big, blocky erasers for things like this, because I only want to get rid of a tiny little portion of detail. And I have a far bigger area of surface, a uh, big area of chunk. That's not right either. The bigger you erase, or the more you're going to erase. I want to. I want to only erase a small area. So naturally, I want a tinier eraser. There we go. I managed that. I know how to English. <laughs> right. So I want to make his tongue. I. I guess you could. I'm, I'm trying to give him like a Homer Simpson ah, kind of tongue. I'm sure you guys could imagine what that kind of tongue would look like. So there you go. Put some dark shadow under his tongue. Bit of dark shadow in his mouth. I may... Uh, I might draw um, this again in ballpoint pen. Just depends how well this goes. And I think I said earlier that I'm using, I don't know if I did, but I'm using a 0.7 millimeter mechanical pencil. Generally, I actually prefer using like a 0.5 or maybe even a 0.3 because that way I get a lot finer detail in the pencil. And I'm a big fan of detail so there you go there's his mouth it's like and stuff 
kind of, well, I'm putting it, I don't know. See, this is me trying to explain what I'm thinking, and I don't even know if I want to do what I'm doing right now. But, yeah. Do I want to give him a bit of a cheek like that? Mm. No, I don't want to give him a cheek like that. Because that made him look like he was holding his breath in, which I don't want. I want him to be roaring it out. Right. So. Okay, now. Actually, this is probably where I'm going to start putting my um, sketching elements. Because I want him. Okay, you guys can't see what I'm doing, but you know how Tyrannosaurus Rex has their arms? That is how I want my Pigasaurus Jurassic Pork pig thing to um, have his little hoofs. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll give him like a little bit of a pudgy tummy, because he's a piggy wiggy. Mm. No, I don't want it. I don't want his back to look like that, and I don't want his neck to be there. <sighs> ah, and I just dropped my pencil. Very clever. Ah, still can't grab it. There it is. All right. So what I'll do is I'll. Um, okay. You know how I was saying about doing the facial expressions when you want to um, draw facial expressions to make you more relate to the character? This is where I'm actually right now doing the dinosaur hand movement so I can kind of get a feel for my character and get an idea of how I want his hands to look. So I got that down and now I'll draw a little... idea of what his hands or his arms will look like. I'm going to give his hooves a slightly more clawed vibe. Actually the lucky thing about hooves, well pig hooves anyway, I, well, I've never been that close to a pig, I'm sure they, traditionally speaking, cartoon hooves of just like, you know, two prongs and a slit up the middle. I think actually they've got like four fingers or something but the good thing about the cartoon version of pigs is they have two little hoofs and a Tyrannosaurus only has two little fingers. So that kind of works out for this little piggy. To make him look more like a T Rex Pigasaurus. Actually, you know what? Later on, I'm probably gonna. I like the idea of a Pigas a, a um, Jurassic Pork. Actually, you know what? I am not going to put in his legs. Because I was just thinking, I like the idea of making this guy into a t shirt. So, I'm not gonna bother putting the rest of his body in. I, instead, am going to put him in a circular format. In the old, uh, traditional Jurassic Park round circle. This is where my graphic design mind comes in. It makes me go, well, I might want to make this as a t-shirt. So what I'm now drawing, yeah, sure, it's an illustration now. But this will probably actually work out later on in another video as a template for a vector illustration and I will draw the this little dude in vector so I can make him into a t-shirt and sell him on things like Redbubble and such I mean if you have really awesome ideas for where I can for the best kind of companies to do t-shirt selling through please let me know in the comments because that would be awesome I am looking into doing actual professional, uh, or proper screen printing anyway. 
I do have a screen printing kit, but it can get a little bit messy and difficult, especially with the screens and such. And this is me trying to draw with myself a nice, clean, perfect circle without using any tools other than my pencil in my hand. I mean, I'll be, um, when I'll be doing this in Vector Natural, I'll just be like using a circle tool. Simple, easy. But for the sake of illustration purposes, I am going to just try to be as neat as I can and yeah. I'm actually use I'm not drawing with this part I'm not actually really drawing from my fingers. I'm drawing through my hand through my hand and through my wrist well from my wrist through my hand to my fingers. So I'm letting my wrist and palm do the drawing at this end and guiding the fingers along. Alright, so I was gonna I was deciding whether to do a palm tree like the old Jurassic Park uh, circle but I'm debating whether to do a, a tree or to do a farm and also because if I'm gonna sell this as a t-shirt I do not want to be sued I don't want to steal intellectual properties such as logos, I want to make my own version of it. A, my own cute, funny, satirical version of it. So, you know what, Bugret, I'm going to... Ah, right, okay, that's what I can do. I can make the windmill of a farm as the equivalent of the Jurassic Park tree. Haha. Gee. Uh, sometimes I find it a little bit hard to come up with clever, witty ideas right on the spot. But, you, know, you just practice. Well, that's a really crappy uh, little indica indicative sketch uh, placement of it, but I, I know what it's going to be. I should probably uh, go onto the Google and do a quick little Google search of what a windmill looks like properly. But for now, I'll just draw it in. And because the timer on my camera is saying that this is now at 2 minutes 15 left, I'm going to stop recording and and um, continue where I left off with the next part. So, I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. I didn't go very far, so I'm just going to put him in the circle a bit more. Um, yeah, so I am now going to continue on with my little sketchiness of the Pigosaurus Jurassic Pork little graphic. The thing I like about um, drawing on YouTube or drawing for YouTube because I'm recording this previously is that not only do you get to see the process of me drawing but I like the idea of it like verbally annotating what I'm doing, so you get to hear a bit of the design thought process while drawing. So you don't just get left with a instant music video thingy in the background, but instead you get a bit of artist insight into what's going on. I'm trying to be as entertaining as possible because God knows I've seen a lot of dull videos out there and I really hope this is not one of those dull videos I'm trying to my best to be somewhat entertaining maybe I should do some interesting no that was a stupid voice <laughs> but you know what I mean I'm trying to be a little bit more entertaining for the viewers I know what I like to listen to in my uh, YouTube browsing so I would prefer to have you guys listen to something that's interesting rather than dull and boring I mean it'd be cool to have like this all squished into a what a one minute two minute drawing time-lapse video 
and have just some generic music but all you're doing with that is watching me draw you're not really you're not hearing the story of this little illustration as I go along you don't know why I suddenly came because you guys now know that I had no intention of making this into a circle that didn't pop into my mind until just recently when I was drawing this so uh, I'll put some hay bales hay bales should work because I'm trying to make it you know the, the black silhouette palm tree bit from like the logo um, I won't worry too much about putting a Jurassic pork in there or will I I don't know I could just do that when I'm making the vector which I most likely will but this is like a little drawing in itself so yeah I am sometimes it's hard to anna verbally annotate while you're trying to think in your head what the hell you're actually going to do with a um a drawing while you're drawing it so I'm trying to make the background that silhouette styled graphic of Jurassic Park but instead of it being palm trees I'm making it a farm I thought that'd be more interesting and kind of witty. I mean, the the drawing of the little pig himself. I mean, I could probably draw him a couple more times, make him act, uh, make him a little funnier or cuter or a different style that might be more interesting for t-shirts or stickers even. Actually, I should probably put this on red bubble eventually and sell my stickers or you know make my own stickers I know there's quite a few good little sticker um, manufacturers out there on the internet that I've heard of there's like st sticker robot I think and there's also thanks to uh, Adventures in Design who you really should check out they are awesome they uh, introduced me into the knowledge that there's a company called Jack Prints J A K Prints dot com and they do stickers. I think they even do vinyl stickers. I haven't actually used them yet but I should probably try. Because I mean Redbubble are good if you you know the good thing about Redbubble is that I should probably actually do a whole video on Redbubble really at some point but with Redbubble you basically um, you put your artwork on there uh, on it you you set it as like what a print or a sticker or a t-shirt and then that's it if someone wants to buy the um, the artwork sorry I'm just thinking of what I want to do in here if they want if a person wants to buy your artwork as a t-shirt or whatever you've set it up as they pay for it and um, Redbubble does the printing side of it so they put it onto a t-shirt or they print it they ship it out to the, the customer and you don't have to do anything else except enjoy the uh, the money coming in from that which is oh, it's very 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 good if you don't really want to uh, invest time and effort into printing your own products and storing them and st you know storing them somewhere and then when someone does well then you have to put them online somewhere to sell them or it's a lot better if you want to s Redbubble is good if you want to sell online and doing it the old school traditional printed manner or you know getting your stuff through jack print or get, getting stuff from a physical printer and then holding it yourself is good if you want to have like you know a stall a little market stall um 
so yeah. But if you, unless you want to, unless you want to sell stuff at market stalls, I it's a lot more complex. There's like web design to make a website to store your to to sell your stuff on. I mean, you could do it through Etsy, I guess. But um, yeah, it's more of the fact of every time someone buys one of your products, um, you have to then package it, you have to ship it, you have to get the um, get their address and package it right, mail it properly, and all the onus is on you. Whereas if you do Redbubble, which is a print-on-demand thing, they take care of everything. So if there's a trouble, if there's any problems, they, your customer takes up with Redbubble, and then Redbubble, uh, I assume, work from there. I've never had any complaints. I've never had people telling me, oh, why didn't it come? Why didn't my, why didn't my order come? I've never had anybody uh, ask me any questions on it. All they've ever done is say, "Awesome design, thank you, thank you, it looks awesome." So that is why, I, for, until now, and probably in the future, until so, until I find something better. Like I said, if you guys know anything better, then Redbubble, be sure to let me know. But until then. Red bubbles easy. I've got a, a stack load of stuff on there. Um, I'll probably put a link in the description of where you can find my stuff, and this t-shirt will inevitably end up there as well. I'm putting a bit of shading there. Um, but yeah. So if you want to support me in my art, if you like these videos. Go and check out my Redbubble store. Just search Bean Arts, B E A N A R T S. That is my sort of company thing. That's my art business side of things. That is where I have all my um, all my phone cases, stickers, and T-shirts, and all that good stuff. And yeah, there you go. After I've given you a little bit of a slight bit of a red bubble review while demonstrating me drawing a pig. <laughs> so yeah, obviously now what I'm doing is just you know typical. I'm just rendering in the background. This will actually be like, hmm, yeah. This will be like um, a gradient in Illustrator. I'm really like I'm actually really really liking the idea of um, doing this in Illustrator. So yeah, keep an eye out for a video of me doing this in Illustrator. If you are so way inclined and interested to watch me do that, of course, this might be just boring to you, and you might not want to watch it all. Which by all means don't. <laughs> I just wanted to give people who might be interested. A little bit of a insight into the process creation of a my drawing and art and all that good stuff. It's a little bit messy around here, but you know, this wasn't intended to be a fully finished artwork as such. This is more basically my drawing down of an idea that I had while watching a YouTube video of a dude wearing a t-shirt that said Jurassic Park like I said before and I just thought you know it'd be cool to make a pig a Saurus it was only going to be him but hey I got the whole logo thing going in now so that is how art evolves sometimes you get something from nothing I'm just using my finger to blend the pencil a bit so it doesn't look so scratchy and liney. Um, right, so I will I'll erase that line. And hopefully, hopefully it lines up kind of. Hmm. Do I draw the pig 
in the circle or do I make it uh, hmm. because this area all this area is what you call negative space and sometimes negative space is a very interesting tool to use design wise and in illustration I'm thinking right now I might actually use that it wouldn't work in an illustration, oh, could work in an illustration format. See, like, when, when you, it's hard to explain what will and won't work as an illustration or an artwork or a design, because that is before you've created it. When you are creating, anything can happen. Which is why it's called creativity and experimentation, exploring. It is not a defined definitive exact science so yeah I really like that actually I quite like that a bit <laughs> uh, I should probably stop playing around with this part now it's more or less done uh, yeah so let's see if I can fit in a bit of a Jurassic Park a Jurassic Pork. This isn't Jurassic Park. This has no affiliation to Jurassic Park at all, so don't come knocking on my doors, lawyers. Unless, of course, you want to knock on my door to uh, hire me, which I'm more than happy to do. <laughs> I'm more than happy to work for anyone to do with Jurassic Park, because that is a most awesome, amazing series, which I'll probably get deeper into at a later point all right so what I'll do here we go okay I'm gonna zoom out a little bit there we go you can see my hand there as I draw away but let's just chuck in a little this is where I put in my little thumbnail stick figure thing just to get the idea of where the how the lettering goes to make sure that I could spell it correctly that would be awkward and also I'm trying to figure out the placement of the letters there's four there's eight letters in Jurassic so probably my best bet is to put it in a bit of a grid structure because I'm not using a computer to you know fix up um, to fix up alignment and placement of text and stuff so I'm just going to give each letter of Jurassic its own little cell to live in oh huh. well my my uh, preview on my camera says that I can see it so I'm guessing you guys can see that too so that's going to be where I'm thinking, I, I don't want the actual logo to, I don't want the typography to look too exactly the same as Jurassic Park. I want it to be slightly similar, I want it to be uh, from the same DNA. But, much like the Indominus Rex, which we will be seeing soon in Jurassic World, I am just going to be, um, uh, genetically modifying <laughs> their typography <laughs> that was such a corny um explanation but yeah you get the idea so here we go i'm gonna put in some that there is where jurassic is gonna fit pork is a lot easier to work with that's just four letters so that's gonna fit in that little box these little boxes just give me an indication of where things are gonna go it's probably what they did in the old days of graphic design before they had, we had computers. See, I got into graphic design just fr just as a transition from traditional tape and rules and that to um, computers. I didn't have a computer when I was... Well, I did have a computer, but not a great one when I was, um, in, when I was learning school, in high school, so... Yeah. So 
I am doing it in the old school sort of way of hoping that I don't mess up because <laughs> this old school way is if you messed up you did it again you had no uh, new, you had no revert to original, you had no copy and paste no, I mean you had a photocopier but you didn't have the lovely safety net that computers give us these days and I fully acknowledge and admit that today us, peop us uh, younger artists and designers have no idea how lucky we've got it But I do like going down the traditional route. Um, Jurassic. K. Yeah, put the K. K. It's not a K. It's Jurassic, but it's like a C, not a K. Right. So I'm trying to make the C look a little bit like the J for the um, balance, um, oh, we're at 1 minute 30, so I'm going to stop it there for a moment, and I'll come back to this, um, after the break, <laughs> so I'll be right back. Right, g'day, I'm back, and now I'm going, there we go, I'm going to focus just on the typography section, I wasn't actually intending to have any typography in here at all. But, I am now, so, I am going to put in each individual letter form. Put in the R. R, me mateys! Yar! Or, no, okay, shut, shut up, B. Your jokes aren't funny. Right, Jura. The eye will actually be incredibly easy, that's just a stick, so that might actually give me a lot more room to work with. Jura. Now, yeah, see, th this is where you realize that it's a lot easier to work with computers than it is to work with pencil when working with typography, because you can't shuffle the letters around perfectly like you can with a computer. You basically trial and error. You, you do it once, if it doesn't work, you do it again. So I'll shuffle... Actually, if I shuffle the S over here... That will give me more room for the A, which will give me more room for the R, because the R was looking a little bit squished there. I had that um pointy eraser. Actually, I'm gonna have a quick little look to see if I've got any other. Uh, it's not looking good. I really have to tidy up my working desk. <laughs> not that you people of YouTube need to know about that, but I need to replace the eraser that goes in there so I can do a little fine tune, fine minute, not fine tune. Well, I am fine tuning, but fine. Fine, minute, erasing and fixing. You know what? I probably will just. I'm gonna do the extended. I'm gonna do an extended version of this video, which is what you're watching right now and listening to, and I will do a short, non-verbal version, so you, you don't have to watch all this if you. You know, you want to see it develop quickly. That's probably the best way to do this. Hey, I'm new to YouTube as well, so... I am learning as I go along, and you guys get to hear my thought process as I learn. You can learn with me. <laughs> there you go. So I'll do a short, quick version, 
see if, what kind of music I, I can chuck in without getting flagged for copyright. And I will do this version, the annotated version, for those who like to hear the rambling ons and can, you know, so you can hear the artist thinking and discussing and talking about the more interesting, if you're into that sort of thing, elements of design creation and art creation. I'm also hoping that my head isn't coming and squeezing into the uh, frame as I'm drawing, but hey, whatever. Like I said, I eventually will be using a webcam, which will make this a hell of a lot easier. You'll notice a vast jump in quality. I did have a webcam, but the cable is stuffed. <laughs> if you, uh, I'll show you the webcam at another point, maybe. We're not interested in that right now. We're just interested in me drawing the letter four up now. You know, I think I might actually. I've been watching a lot of um. What do you call it? Um, concerts is the word I'm looking for. A lot of concerts on YouTube, and of course, a lot of the uh, um, pirated, I guess. <laughs> um, uploaded um, albums, full albums onto YouTube that a that are separated into chapters. I think I will be doing that with these videos if I figure out how to. I'll do a chapter on the initial pig, a chapter on that, and then the chapter on the typography, so you guys can just fast forward to whatever takes your fancy and catches your interest. Right, now let's put in the pork. Nice, big, fat, porky lettering. That's how we do it. Big, fat, and porky. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing because I just thought of uh, Porky Pig. I was going to do a little yibbity yibbity, but I'm not going to. Kind of thinking about doing this in a, in a little balloony, squishy, cartoony kind of thing. Kind of thing, what I'm talking about. Kind of type. Should use the proper terminology. If I was going to, uh, it's an idea that I just popped into my head, so I don't know if it'd be any good. I'm not going to actually explore it, but I'm just thinking it'd be a laughable. Maybe I'll put a little pig smiley face in there. I was going to put this whole thing in there, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Let's just put a little screamy face in there. Give him a little bit of a nose. The nose looks very much like a guitar pick. You can do pig nose any way you want, really. If, if you're going for a cartoon style, I mean, you can do like a perfect circle. Great band, by the way. You can do a um, an oval. You can even make your pig nose a star if you, if that's what you want to do. But yes, I'm doing it like this. Might give him some little. I uh, can't really see. Maybe we'll give him a little ear up in there. Don't even know if you can see that. But hey, whatever. Little ears up there. <laughs> I was going to give him whiskers until I realised wait, pigs don't have whiskers. Or do they? The mystery of life. Do pigs have whiskers? No, they don't. Put the R in there, a nice fat chunky one, and we'll put the K in there. This time we have a K. A little fat chunky K block lettering in there. So it looks like this video is going to turn out to be around an hour and a bit. So I've been drawing this for about an hour. Not too bad. Well, 
Maybe not an hour actually. This video, this camera only records in 20 minute intervals, so that's two, four, nope. About an hour. There you go. We're past the uh, 40 minute mark, I think. About the 40, 50 minute mark. I think that was an eyelash. Don't know if you guys saw that. With me and my big bushy eyebrows and my eyelashes. Okay, eyelashes are not part of the eyebrows. <laughs> could have been an eyelash, could have been an eyebrow. I do not know. And there's a key. I don't like to, I, I don't always write my lettering in sequ sequential manner. Because sometimes I like to see how, if, I like to balance that letter out, the end letter out with the first letter, and then use that as a guide uh, to fit everything else in between it. In a traditional drawing typography sense, I, I find that's probably the best way to go about things. So I can finish off the S, put the S in there. I am really starting to like the idea of this Jurassic Pork. I mean, I'm sure someone's already done this before, and there's a there's a chance that someone will comment in here that, hey, someone's already done this, here's a link of the artwork that you stole. And I'll be like, oh, crap, how's that? But, you know, it's a big world, there's how many billions of people in the world, I'm sure there's bound to be a few of us that get the idea to draw a Jurassic Pork. Oh, look at that, all the uh, smudginess on my finger. You really should put like a, a tissue or something while you're drawing so you don't smudge crap everywhere. But yes. Any likeness of this image to anything else is completely coincidental. Raising my, I don't know, do you call these key lines? I suppose you call them key lines. My little rough placement lines. Hopefully, this will be fun to illustrate in a uh, vector. I really do, because that could be quite fun. Something to explore and have fun with. I use my big lungs to blow that out because I really don't want to smudge anymore by wiping the page. And I, because there's a lot of black here, I am going to put some black in here to, um, uh, not contrast, to complement. That's what I'm looking for, complement it. So I'm just going to put in my. There you go, see? Don't have to sharpen my pencil. Just click the button. Like uh, Boris in the pen. The click, click, click in Goldeneye. Another awesome movie. And there you go. I'm doing my shadows here. What else can I say that's interesting right now? I mean, I could go into great detail into um, my love of Jurassic Park and my love of drawing and illustration, but you guys will get the idea of that if you watch, if you decide to watch along. Yeah, that's another thing I'm kind of, well, I'm kind of camping, camping, no, hamping up. I don't know, is that the right terminology? I don't know, whatever. But I'm trying to accentuate my Australian accent occasionally because, yeah, I'm Australian. And why the fool not? <laughs> I'm also trying my best not to swear too much. 
Actually, I didn't. I didn't say the F word. I said pork. Why the pork not? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I want. I want this, these videos to be, you know, applicable to as many people as possible. All ages. Because Jurassic Park is for everybody. I mean, theoretically, it's meant to be mainly for kids, I guess, but it's bugger that. Pork. Nah. I think that Jurassic Park is for everybody. And besides, the actors wouldn't have been in the movie if they didn't like dinosaurs at least a little bit. I suppose maybe they might have. Maybe they don't care. Maybe they're only interested in the paycheck. But... Steven Spielberg at least loves dinosaurs. Until he stopped doing them. <laughs> well, he still had something to do with Jurassic Park. I think he's the executive producer of something of the Jurassic World, which I hope turns out to be a lot better than Jurassic Park 3, which, I mean, other than the animatronics, the CGI was okay, I suppose. I mean, Jurassic Park 1 and The Lost World were far better. CGI wise and I really hope that uh, Jurassic World CGI improves because my god that CGI is looking worse than Jurassic Park 3 at the moment and that is quite worrying there's very very minimal uh, from what I've seen in the trailers animatronics of Dr uh, for Jurassic World which is also very worrying the only thing, thing I've seen so far is the Apatosaurus um, that, that's sick on the ground. Oh, that, doesn't that remind you of Jurassic Park? <laughs> but yeah, the, um, the sick Apatosaurus is the only animatronic that I've seen so far in the trailer. A lot of CGI, and that CGI hasn't looked its best, but the movie is coming out in the next couple of months, so I'm hoping they will have improved it, and that Industrial Light and Magic will have reminded us why they were the most awesome and the first at doing awesome CGI. We can only hope. And... Yes. I think I'm pretty much finished with this. Let's put a little bit of more shadow on his nose. Just to get that little honky nose coming out there. But yeah, there you go! Uh, actually... Stuff it. Just gonna put the little P in there. The little, oh, I don't know. I don't even know if that works as well. It's probably a bit too cliche. But yeah, I might erase that later. But there you have it. There is me drawing. Jurassic Pork. I hope you guys liked it. It will eventually be showing up on somewhere. The, the, the link will be on the description, I am sure. Like this video if you thought it was awesome. Disliked it if you thought it sucked and that I should stop rambling and talking. And if you have some constructive criticism other than You suck! then please put that in. I'm really happy to listen to any form of critique um, to improve my craft and also, you know, any critique to improve my YouTube video making because I want to be awesome. I want to make awesome things for you guys and hopefully you guys learn some awesome things and there's not all that many awesome that I've seen drawing um, demonstrators on YouTube and I want to change that.